Lesson 44, finding slope using the slope formula. Today in class, we're going to take a look at how we find slope using a specific formula that does the calculation for us. In lesson 42, we looked at calculating rate of change by taking two points from a table, two points from a graph, and then finding the differences between the x's and the y's. Well, there's actually a formula that's set up for this. I kind of alluded to it in the Lesson 42 video, but here's the actual official practice of using this formula. Our new concepts here has that formula right here for us. Any two ordered pairs on a line can be used to determine the slope of the line. The slope is a measure of the steepness of a line. The slope M of a line contains points x and y and x and y. So they're labeled 1 and 2 because you're picking two of those points and you have to have this little number designation. This little number is a, called a subscript. It doesn't mean anything besides the fact that these are the two points that we're using. This is going to be referenced as point 1. This is going to be referenced as point 2. Then you take both of those sets of points in their ordered pair form and you put the variables in this change of rate equation that has your y variables in the numerator and your x variables in the denominator. Then by subtracting the two y's from each other and subtracting the two ones from each other, you're actually finding the change of rate that happens in that rise and you're finding the change of rate that happens in that run to give you an overall ratio of here's how it's changing rise over run throughout the entire line. So here's an example. In example one, you've got line point two four and six six. You put that into the y two y one formula x two minus x one. So you take the last number, and this would be six minus four, and then six minus two. Write that out, then subtract it. Six minus four is two. Six minus two is four. Two divided by four is one half. Same thing here in letter B. Negative four four and four negative two. I always like to have this reference right here for me, and I put those numbers into the proper places. So I would take negative 2, put it there, 4, put it there, 4, put it there, and negative 4, put it there. So it looks like this. This is the part that's going to take some practice. Actually, taking a look at the ordered pair and then labeling properly, where is the y2, where is the x2, where is the y1, where is the x1, and then putting those into the right place. It kind of takes just some practice to go back and forth between those. And you can see in your example problems here and in the video that you would have watched leading up to this, a ton of practice in terms of where you put those items. Now there's a couple points that come up when you're practicing where you might notice something that throws off what you could possibly calculate. In this example you've got 0, negative 5 and 5, 10. Here you're going to plug those values in and they did that for you. It's 10 minus negative 5. Notice that the minus sign, the operation that's happening in this overall formula stays the same all the way through. If you've ever got a negative number, that negative number is put inside the parentheses, but that means that there's two of these negatives that are here. So instead of this being 10 minus 5, it's 10 minus negative 5, which actually means 10 plus 5. So that gets added to turn into 15, and then 5 minus 0 is 5. So you have 15 over 5, which reduces to 3. So anytime you have those two negatives next to each other, there's going to be an addition way in which to solve this. Letter D, you've got y squared minus y1, x squared over x1. You take the two order pairs, plug them in. Negative 13, negative 5. Now there's two negatives here, but that doesn't mean they're added. It's only in this fashion where they're next to each other. Here, you're going to keep the same sign, same sign sum, right? Negative 13 minus 5 is going to give you negative 18. And 3 minus negative 6, here those are going to add together, you get 9. So negative 18 and positive 9, one's negative, one positive, so my answer is going to be negative 18 divided by 9 is 2. So my answer is negative 18. Two. In example, you can in example two, you can use a table to do these same two things. You just have to look at the table in reference to an ordered pair. You can pretend that this is an x value and a y value, and now that you have two of those, you can put that into x y2 minus y1 form, x2 minus x1. Y is in our numerators again, and x is in the denominators. Again, y is the rise or run of the slope and is the rise, the up and down, and x is the run, the left to right, the horizontal movement, and then by calculating and subtracting those two things, you can find the actual slope of that line. If a slope is negative, it has this downward direction. If the slope is positive, it has this upward direction. So negative is actually down from left to right. Positive is up from left to right. Here's an example of how you can find it from a graph. The same thing is true from a set of ordered pairs that you're given or from a table. In a graph, you just take two of the points that are actually on that graph. You might actually pick those points out yourself, or you might be given those points. In this example, you're given those points. Negative 2 and 7, 3 and negative 3. Plug that into our formula, just like so, and then do your subtraction. Negative 3 minus 7, same sign sum, negative 10. 3 minus negative 2 is 5. You reduce that to be negative 2. In letter B, you've got 3, 5, and 1, negative 5. Put those into our formula. 
and then solve. 5 minus negative 5, 2 negatives make a positive, positive 10, 3 minus 1 is 2, it gives you a positive 2. Because it's positive, it's giving that indication, yep, it's going up in this left to right direction. Now, how are we going to go about showing that we know how this works? Well, the last example here has for us determining slope of a horizontal and vertical line. We determined the slope of a horizontal and vertical line in the form of finding that a slope of a horizontal line is zero, and we found that the slope of a vertical line is undefined, but to do that mathematically, you would do the same exact thing. You pick two points, put them into the formula, and you'd find that anytime that there's a horizontal line, your slope is zero, as indicated here in example 4a. The slope of a vertical line, there is no slope because guess what happens? The zero shows up in the denominator, which is undefined, hence why we say that's overall undefined. Now to demonstrate your learning for this skill, I don't want you just necessarily to take a look at the practice problems that are down here on page 278, and then obviously the lesson practice on 279, you're more than welcome to, but what I'd like you to do is to go to your IXL page and click on the link for this Y.2. Y.2 is going to bring you something like this that's going to allow you to practice and practice and practice with an example where it gives you two points and you find the slope with that point slope formula. I clicked on learn an example so that you can see again how this is highlighted. Here's the question. you got two points. Find the slope of those two points. You're trying to find the change in y and the change in x, which actually looks like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You plug in those values just like such and then they even have the color-coded indication of where those go. So 6 goes here, 1 goes there, you subtract, 7 goes here, 3 goes there, you subtract. Notice that the 1 and 7 are on the same set of uh, ordered pairs. They're also in the same location to the left-wise. 3 and 6 are in the same ordered pair. They're in the same location to the right-wise. So it's kind of like you just take this and turn it, put it in that location, then subtract across the board. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. 7 minus 3 is 4. That's the extent of what you'll be practicing, and I'd like you to get to that level of mastery. So work yourself all the way to that level of 8, and further, continue to push yourself to get better and better and better. God's blessings.